you're always going to listen to a uh, unbiased expert more than you would uh, from the company themselves. In the last couple of years, I've been working to, and have built out a brand new product focusing on digital opinion leaders called DOL Map. There was nothing that was focusing on what their activity looks like. Maybe we can start by understanding a little bit about your background. Sure. I was working with pharmaceutical companies, looking to help them figure out the best way to find key opinion leaders based on all the information that was out there and give uh, clients in the pharmaceutical industry a way to, to make sense of it all and understand who the, the thought leaders are based on their experiences and their roles. Digital opinion leaders is a newer emerging group of experts. They have a huge impact and a huge audience online. They're people who spend a lot of time understanding a therapeutic area, and they have a ton of people really listening to them. When it comes to digital opinion leaders, are they presenting information in a different way? Are they using the mediums in which they're communicating to really further their conversations in a way that's perhaps more compelling? A couple of things that we're seeing as key differences. Um, one is a more personalized approach to delivering information, um, maybe a little bit more informal than traditionally uh, KOLs would be sharing. Um, another thing we're just we're seeing is is just a lot more interactivity in the discussions and a lot more back and forth, which also makes a ton of sense from the interactive format they're being posted in. But you know we've seen some digital opinion leaders that will post an interesting article, uh, pose their opinion, and then open it up for discussion and ask people, "What do you think about this?" How should people think about measuring success of these campaigns? What is it that we're showing clients back? that enables them to see that, you know, not only we identified the DOLs, but we have in fact started to see that influence ripple across the industry. There's key metrics in terms of, you know, how many people are being reached, what the number of views look like. And it's really interesting to be able to, to track where a post starts and having like all this data there to actually see how many people it's really reaching. Um, the number of followers, the number of engagements are really, really key. Um, it's also a great way to measure the impact, not just the number of people reached, but like how are people interacting with the post? So we can really get a good sense of like how many posts are being liked or shared or, or reposted by followers. That's great. And how would you um, educate internal compliance teams and clients who might be a little reticent to think about DOLs and maybe potentially the social media programs that would fall out from this? Um, how would you guide them in that process? Uh, pharma companies have been working with these traditional key opinion leaders for decades, and there are compliance guidelines and, and regulatory formats for working with key opinion leaders, and DOL should be handled in the same format. So at the end of the day, they are very similar in a lot of ways, um, and we, we encourage our clients to really think of them in the same way in terms of how they approach them. They're both opinion leaders that have huge audiences. They just have different platforms for how they reach out to their audience. When you think about the difference between um, what Precision Site Encha's KOL platform and DOL platform offers versus the competition, what would you say is the biggest differentiator? One of the reasons we built DOL Map was because there was nothing that was focusing on the opinion leaders themselves and really understanding what their sharing profile looks like, what their activity looks like. So I don't think there's any comparison to DOL Map currently, and we're very excited and proud of that. You know, one of the things that comes up a lot when we talk about anything that's happening in relation to any form of social media is just, you know, the notion of fake news or misinformation. How, um, how are you thinking about that? How does that play, in the, play into the DOL tool? If nothing else, this should be a reason that pharma and healthcare companies should make an effort to understand who their DOLs are. Because a digital opinion leader is someone, they're people who really understand the therapeutic area, and they're not going to be posting inaccurate content. Right. And if they're aware of people that are, they're going to be very quick to address it because they really do want to be kind of the guardians of that scientific area. So you've been named a, a techno geek by PM360. You've been quoted in numerous articles. You know, this, this notion of DOL is clearly on the rise. What are you most excited about? I'm most excited about this convergence that we're seeing where key opinion leaders are becoming digital opinion leaders and digital opinion leaders are rising to be KOLs. And I'm excited that I think in the coming years, it's just going, just going to be one group we're looking at and we don't need to compare them separately. I think that can be really confusing. One thing that I'm really passionate about is trying to make really complex things 
simple to understand. And finding a way to, to make sense of it all for our clients was something that I really wanted to be involved in. I guess that's why they call you a digital problem solver. <laughs> Sounds like it.